Hi everyone. I am Chris and this is Simply Classic. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to use some inspiration and creativity to make something our own and this is the bag. It is a Dooney and Burke bag and Dooney and Burke has a full ostrich collection right now and this is just one of the bags in the collection. I just fell in love with it. It's a very simple bag to make and I guess I really liked it because Bolt's bags, which I've been showing you some mail openings from them, they've got some faux ostrich and it just all worked out. I mean, the bags are that I'm making are just beautiful and they look just like this Dooney and Burke bag. So you can go on my website, I will link it below, and you can purchase a cutting chart and then watch this video and I'll walk you through how to make the bag. Okay, so the one that we're going to make today is um, this blue one. And the bag has a zipper front closure that fits a cell phone. Okay. It is a crossbody bag, and I'm going to show you how to do this buckle closure and a strap keeper today. It has a zipper top, and then inside, I don't know what the original Dooney and Burke bag had, so I just put a slip pocket on one side, and then I have a zipper pocket on the other side. And um, the zipper pocket is there so that you can leave it open and turn your bag and then top stitch. I'm doing a drop-in lining today, but if you want to leave that zipper pocket open to turn the bag, you certainly can. Don't turn it through the zipper pocket. You want to leave the bottom of the bag open, and I tell you all that as we go along. Um, the original Dooney and Burke bag has feet. I did not put any feet. And I guess the reason why is because I feel like this is, this is such a small bag. And wearing it as a crossbody, I'm going to be less apt to sit it down. So I didn't really think feet were necessary, but you can certainly put feet if you want to. Um, strap adjusters, just a forewarning, the strap adjusters are not sewn on. They are riveted on. So make sure you have a rivet press or a way to press rivets in if you're going to um, make this bag. Now, I have a couple others here that I made as well, and all of them are just slightly different. We have this beautiful lavender with black, and then I have this really pretty burnt orange with a brown strap. Now, what's different about them, and I'll show you this in the video, is how I top stitched the upper lining. These two bags are different. Um, I used a three quarter inch strap for this bag and also for the bag we're making. This one here has a one inch strap. And the reason why I used one inch is because I had a one inch strap made. I didn't want to have to remake another strap if I had this just laying around, so I went ahead and used it. But I'm going to say that I don't really think a one inch strap is appropriate for the bag because it is such a small bag. I would go ahead and make a three quarter inch strap. The way I did this strap connector is I just took the piece that I tell you to cut and then just edge coated it with black, folded it in half and riveted it on that way. I used some D-rings and a swivel clip. For this bag here, I did something a little different. I actually um, just folded it back on itself, but not all the way down. I didn't have any three quarter inch swivel straps or swivel clips. So I ended up just using an O-ring here and just riveting everything together. Now this is an adjustable strap and I have a strap adjuster on here. So you can still adjust the strap, you just can't remove the strap, okay? And then for this bag that we make today, I'm doing the connector similar to that last one, only I put three rivets. 
I edge coated it with some brown and then I ended up using a rectangle ring because again, I don't have three quarter inch swivel clips. So I may do, and of course this one has a buckle instead. So I know y'all love DB's pocket tote. So we're gonna name this DB's crossbody. And I hope you'd like this as much as you do DB's pocket tote. I think you will. It is a really super easy bag. If you're new here, please subscribe. We do all kinds of fun things like this. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, please. And stay tuned. Let's go ahead and get stitching. All right, let's go over prep for all of our pieces. Um, we have a front and a back. They're exactly the same. Okay, on your front and your back pieces, you need to cut on the longer end. So this is, or this is wider than it is tall. So on the widest end, you wanna go ahead and cut inch and a half by inch and a half cutouts at the bottom. You wanna do the same thing for your deck of the light. Inch and a half by inch and a half. And then you're going to fuse this right in the middle, and you should have a half inch seam allowance all the way around. You wanna do that for your front and your back. And we're going to cut an opening for our exterior zipper here. I'll do that in just a second. I also have um, strap connectors here. Now, what I did with these strap connectors is I just took two pieces, glued them together. I wanted my edge coat to be a different color. So I went ahead and applied two coats of base coat and then two coats of edge coat. Before I did that, I cut out these rounded edges. And the way I did it was I had bought this whole set here of these edge cutters and they come in all different sizes but I'm going to tell y'all I just ordered some more from Rocky Mountain Leather um, I'm not happy with these so don't order these I got these from Amazon I don't think it's worth the money because here's what happened see this one it bent when I hit it and they're not super sharp I mean, these should be really sharp. And I mean, I can, they don't even feel sharp at all. I don't know, they're not. I wanted to try it. And so I think that I, I really like them. I use them a lot, but um, anyway, I don't, just don't think they're very good quality. So when I get the ones in from Rocky Mountain Leather, I will let you know how those are. I think they're gonna be a lot better. So I rounded my edges on my strap connectors and I'm gonna stitch these. We actually are gonna put these on with rivets. So um, I'm gonna stitch them before I put them on the bag and I'm gonna show you how I stitch those. Then I went ahead and on my strap, I, I'm gonna use a buckle because this is faux leather from Bodio and it's super thick. And a strap connector, it, it doesn't slide through. I know this from experience. The strap, I would need an extra wide strap connector. So instead I'm gonna use a buckle and I have my, my buckle here. Now this buckle has a built-in strap keeper. You know, it's a double buckle. So I do not need a strap keeper. If you have a buckle like this, which is just like a slide buckle or one that doesn't have that second. I'll show you the difference here. See how this has got an upper and a lower and this one doesn't? You're gonna need a strap keeper. So I'm gonna show you how to do a strap keeper, but I'm not gonna do a strap keeper. I'm gonna use this buckle here. This is a one inch and this is a three quarter. And that's the reason why I'm using that buckle. So what I did was I used the curved edge on these as well, and I edge coated them. But before I did that, I cut about 12 inches off of my strap, 
and then of course rounded all the edges and edge coated them. Okay, so I have a long one and I have a short one. Now these are three quarter inch and you know, you can do an inch is fine, but this is a small bag. I really think three quarter inch looks better. And just for fun, I did some extra stitching on that. Just, just because. Okay, so my straps are done, but I'll show you how to put the buckle on. Um, on the strap keeper, if you are gonna be using a strap keeper, you're gonna cut your piece out, and then you're gonna mark a half inch from one edge and draw a line. Not in the center, okay, it's a half inch. You're gonna put double-sided tape on both sides. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with this in just a minute. On your lining accent piece, if you decided to do that, you want to draw a line down the center, and then you're going to put double-sided tape on both sides. On my interior pocket overlay, I went ahead and cut out my square, cut out my piece here, and what I did was I measured in three quarters of an inch from every edge. So three quarters of an inch from here, three quarters of an inch from here, from here and from here, drew a box and then cut the box out. And then I just put double-sided tape on each side so I can stick that on my lining. If you're choosing to do a key fob out of fabric, you're going to take your lining fabric, one inch, you're gonna fold it to the center, and then you're gonna fold it again. If you're choosing to do it out of a faux leather or leather, leather or whatever you, whatever you have there. What you're gonna do is the same thing you do at your strap keeper. You're going to draw a line a half inch, not in the center, but a half inch from one edge, and then put double-sided tape on both sides. So we're gonna do the strap keeper and the key fob the same way. Now, I cut out these two little things here. And what I used, I got this kit from Amazon. I do like this kit. So, and I, I think a lot of you already have this, but I'll try to find it and link it below. The piece I used was this one. So there's two, there's one that's kind of square and it's hard to see, sorry. One that's kind of square and one that's kind of round. I used the larger round one and I just cut out two of these. Now, what I do, this is just an accent that you can add to your exterior pocket. And it looks like, see how I have those pieces here on the side? Looks like that. And what I did was I just edge coat it like I put edge coat along the back part of it not not this shorter edge but the wider part I just covered the back with edge coat okay you need to put some woven interfacing on all of your lining pieces um, I think that's it I think that's all you have to do to prep Okay, so let's get started stitching. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by peeling off the back of the tape on this side here. Not the side where you mark, but the other side. Okay, you're gonna fold this edge to meet that line. Then you're gonna take the tape off the other side And you're going to fold that edge down. Now, if you have something that you want to edge coat, this would be the side that you edge coat. The side um, that's a half inch, that you, that you have your half inch mark on, okay? So I'm just going to fold this up. And so now basically you have that folded in thirds. 
All right, I'm gonna move you down here and then I'm gonna do the same thing with my key fob because I wanna use the same color thread. Okay, so I'm just gonna stitch this. Hold on, let me get my light so I can see. Here's my key fob, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to take the back of the tape off of the opposite side that I marked, fold that in, Pull the other side off, fold that up. Okay, then we'll stitch both of these at the same time. And you do wanna use a top stitch length for this. So when we make this keeper, we're just going to rivet it, but you need to determine how big it needs to be. So take your straw, and it's going to be different for whatever kind of materials you use. You, you might be, next time you use a thinner faux leather than what you're using this time, and then you'll have a different size keeper. So what you wanna do is you wanna take two layers of your straps because what's gonna happen is this is gonna come down over, you're gonna have your buckle on here, this is gonna come down over and what you're gonna to wanna to be holding this strap down so it doesn't just flap around, okay? So just take two layers of your straps and then take your keeper and go around like this. So now I know I want it tight because I don't want it to move, but I want it loose enough that I can pull the one strap in and out. So once I know exactly how big it needs to be, I'm just going to kind of hold that and take one of these out. Put a clip. Okay, so what I'm gonna do from here is go ahead and punch a hole.
back on my rivet here. Okay. Then I'm just going to go ahead and set this rivet. And now I have a strap keeper. So when I take my shorter section of my strap, let me push out. Okay, this is the short. Mine's a little bit more than 12, but basically your, your 12 inch piece of strap, you want to take, if you're gonna do a swivel clasp, then you're gonna put a swivel clasp on one end and you're going to punch a hole and rivet it in. I don't have any three quarter inch swivel clasps, so I'm gonna end up connecting this directly to my D-ring on the side of the bag when I'm all said and done. On the other side, you're gonna put your buckle. So take your buckle, and you're going to punch a hole. So your buckles, your strap's gonna come in like this, and it's gonna go out this side, and your tongue of your buckle, you need to punch a hole for it so it goes through. Okay, you see that? So I'm gonna punch a hole right about there. Mark that. Okay, once my hole is punched, I can go ahead and put my tongue up through. I think I need a new hole punch. Mine's getting kind of dull or something. Okay. So this is what it looks like from the front and from the back. So I am just going to move my buckle out of the way here and I'm going to use my hole punch and I'm going to punch a hole right here and then I'm going to put a rivet to hold it down. This is what it looks like. Now, make sure that your tongue and the part that the tongue rests on is going in the right direction. So what I mean by that is this particular buckle has a little indentation right here. I don't know if you can see that. And so I wanna make sure that that's at the top where my tongue is gonna to rest and not at the bottom. So these have the same thing. Um, it has the, the tongue is got like a little curve to it. See that? So you want to make sure that that is going in the right direction. So it's resting on top. If you're going to use this kind of buckle, make sure before you put your swivel clip on that you put your keeper in because you are going to, you're gonna have a tough time if you wait and you try to do it afterwards. You're not gonna be able to get it over your buckle and you're not gonna be able to get it over your um, swivel clip, okay? All right, so that's how you do that. I am going to go ahead and add a swivel clip on my key fob 
and put a rivet in there. So I can go and rivet everything at the same time. And then we'll just stick this in the lining side when we sew it. Okay, to finish your strap, you want to, I always kind of look at my ends and see if there's one end I like better than the other for whatever reason. But you're gonna have to punch holes in this strap so that when you feed it through here, your tongue can go in there and hold the strap down. So what I typically do is space them two inches apart. So I have my little template here from Tops and Bobbins. And I usually start about about five inches, four to five inches from the end, okay? And I'm just gonna line this up. So let's see, five inches from the end is right here. And that's where I'm gonna put my first hole. So I'm just gonna mark here. And here. And I'm going to line this up with my three inch hole and I'm going to go back and mark again with my one inch hole. Now you can put as many holes in here as you want. I usually do at least three, sometimes four. I'll just do three this time and then when I'm done, if I feel like I need to put another one in, I will. So all I'm going to do is punch holes. And then you can feed this through, go to one of the holes, stick it in, and then just like that, you've got an adjustable strap with a buckle. Now, I almost could go ahead and use that strap keeper on here, and I think I might do that. I mean, it's holding it down okay, but if I had this other buckle on there, what would happen, I think y'all get the idea, but this would feed through here. So that it would hold this down. Actually, I think I am gonna do that. Now you can edge coat this edge here if you'd like. And I probably will do that after. Okay, so again, if you're doing swivel clips, you're gonna add swivel clips on this end with some rivets, or you can sew it either way. I'm attaching mine directly to the D-rings. So I'm just gonna wait. Um, I'm gonna go set these rivets and then we'll get stitching. 
we need to go ahead and make our cutout for our exterior zipper. So go ahead and take one of these exterior pieces, doesn't matter which one, and let's find the centers first. So I'm just going to cut out a little V. Okay, so from the center, first thing I'm gonna do is just draw a line down the center so I know exactly where the center is. Okay, then I'm going to measure three inches to the right of this line and three inches to the left of this line. Okay. Now I'm going to measure two inches down from the top. And then I'm going to measure two and a half inches down from the top. Okay, and that's the box we're gonna cut out. Now, <clears throat> when I cut out a box like this without doing any kind of facing, I use my X-Acto knife. And the reason why is because I can get that point right in the corner to cut. So, I'm going to do that. right in the corner. You wanna make sure this is nice and straight because it's gonna be right there in the front of your bag. Okay. And then cut these little sides. You'd rather be a little shy and you just have to clip at your scissors than go than overcut. And you can certainly do these sides with your scissors if you prefer. Okay. Now, if you want to edge coat this, you can. Um, this is the faux ostrich from Bolt's Bags and the color goes all the way through. So I don't need to edge coat because it's pretty much already edge coated for me. from here we're going to go ahead and take our smaller five inch zipper and our two larger zipper pocket pieces. And we're going to sew this zipper on. Now, because the zipper's obviously in the inside of the, or in the outside of the bag, right in the front, you really want to make sure that you don't have a wavy zipper. So I'm going to take the extra step to put a little bit of eighth of an inch tape on here, just to make sure. Zippers and I, I don't know. That's like the hardest part to me is getting a zipper straight in a hole. And it shouldn't be, but it is. I don't know why. So just lay your zipper on top. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead and base this on.
Then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to stitch the seam allowance towards the pocket, back of the pocket, okay? So that the zipper lays nice and flat. for the other side. Okay, so this is what you should have. So go ahead and add your zipper pull. Can do this without my zipper jig. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put double sided tape on the back of the outside piece. Okay, let's make sure our zipper is going in the right direction, whatever direction you want that to be. Usually it closes to the left. And let's peel the back off of this. Double-sided tape and see if we can get this thing straight. Pretty good. And actually, before we do that, I almost forgot. You want to take your two little cutout pieces here, and we're going to put a little bit of double sided tape on the back. like that and we are going to you want to stick the edge inside and then flip it over so I'm just going to stick the side that I did not edge coat in as far as it'll go and then just and then just flip that over. Do that on both sides. I feel like the light is really bad tonight. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out what I can do to make it better. So I'm just going to stick it in, lift the zipper up a little bit. Stick it in as far as it'll go. And then just fold it down. Okay. 
So we're going to stitch around this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure your pocket is open. And I'm also not going to back stitch. I'm going to go ahead and pull my threads through since this is right on the front of the bag. Pull this through now, right? and you just stitch right over that side piece. All right, I'm just going to tie these off. sure that they don't come apart and melt them. Okay, and we can close this pocket up. So you're going to have a difference here. I'm just going to cut that off. Just pull the side over here and stitch down and around. Okay, so now if you want to put rivets in these two little decorative areas, you can, or you can just leave it like this, either way. And I'm going to punch a hole right in the center here and right in the center here, and then go ahead and set a couple rivets. Okay. And there it is with rivets. So now you want to take your other outer piece 
we're going to line up the bottoms and we're going to stitch with a half inch seam allowance. We're going to open up this seam and we're going to top stitch. So here's the outside and there's your inside. So now we want to get our piece of Decoville heavy and we want to place it right here with some double sided tape. So we're just going to put some tape. Don't put it all the way to the end because we're going to stitch this on. So I'm not putting it to the edges. And we just want to center it right here at the bottom. And actually go ahead and find the centers of the Decaville and line those up at the seam. Like that. So now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to mark a stitch line. Okay, so we're going to place our ruler so that the quarter inch line is right here along this edge. So I have a quarter of an inch going into the bag. because I want to catch that Decoville and I want to stitch from the right side. And then I'm going to measure in a half inch from the short edges. Okay, so we're gonna stitch just on the inside of these lines all the way around, just stitch a box. And that's just gonna hold our deck a little heavy in place so we don't have to fuse it. Make sure I have enough bobbin.
Okay, so I'm gonna tie these off, but that's what it looks like from the wrong side and then from the right side. Okay, now if you want to put feet, now's the time. You want to go ahead and mark in um, from the decoville an inch in, roughly, um, from the long side and the short side, and put go ahead and put your feet in. I'm going to not put feet. I, don't, I just, for a small bag, I don't really think it needs it. So I'm going to, although the Dooney and Burke does have feet, so just be aware of that. Okay, so from here, we're just going to go ahead and sew our side seams. We will box the bottom and the outside will be done. Well, we gotta put our strap connectors on. That's true. I almost forgot about those. and line these up. And then go ahead and stitch the sides with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and put some double-sided tape and open up my seams. Okay, and then just like that, these corners are gonna to come together and we're just gonna box the corners. We're going to sew with a half inch seam allowance. You're not going to be able to see this very good, but I'm just going to sew a half inch. Whoop, I'm just going to sew a half inch seam allowance right here. Okay. a second line of stitching on this just so that the stitches don't pull. Okay, then we can trim this down. And then we're going to repeat on the other side. It 
If you want to do a drop-in lining, which I'm going to do, you want to go ahead and put double-sided tape along the top of the bag before we turn it. If you want to leave your zipper interior zipper pocket open and flip the bag and then top stitch, you don't have to do that. So you've got a couple different ways of doing the bag. I like this way because it's one less step. So I'm just gonna put this all around. And it's gonna basically go between the Decoville and the top of the bag. I'm not going to peel it off yet. I'm just going to make sure it's on there real good. Okay, let me go ahead and turn the bag. And if you stitch the bottom right, your stitching should be just inside on all four sides. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, I always wait on this bag to put my name tag until I get to the point where I turn it and I'm just going to go ahead and put it right here. You can put it here, you could put it up a little higher. Just make sure if you put it on this side, you don't go through your pocket when you cut out the slot for it. Before we move on to the lining, let's get our strap connectors on. So you wanna take, first of all, let's stitch these. Let me show you this. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch all the way around. Now this is a pretty tight curve right here and I'm actually gonna crank the um, handle, hand crank the handle to get it. Let me see if I can pull you in some. So I'm going to stitch to just about the edge and I'm just going to turn it a little bit, hand crank, turn a little bit more. Stitch up the other side. Okay, and here's what we have. Let me get some light over here so you can see. You still can't see. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. So because I'm going to attach my strap directly to the bag, I'm actually going to use a rectangle ring instead of a D-ring. If you're going to use a swivel clip, you want to use a D-ring. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. So you can, these have to be riveted on. There's no way you can get in here and stitch these. Um, you can fold it over so that these meet and put it on the bag like that. 
or you can do something funky where maybe you put the, the front further down or you put the back further down, you put it on this way. It's however you want to do it. You get to be your own decision maker here. Now, I have a little bit of um, paint that got on this side, so I'm gonna make sure that part of the strap connector is hidden. And I think I'm gonna do something like this. And I will put two rivets up here and then one rivet down here. So this is a place where you can be, get really creative. So just to kind of give you a reference, I am folding mine over and my fold over, well from the top, from this top bend to the end here is two and a half inches. So if you measure that and fold over the rest, you're gonna get that same look right there. some of this on here make sure I'm at two and a half inches okay and do the same thing with the other one Okay, now on the bag itself, you need to measure down an inch and a half from the side. All right, inch and a half from each side. And you want, you're going to want to line up the top of the connector with that inch and a half mark. You're just going to have, you just want to just barely cover that mark. Now, when you rivet these on, you do not want to go through the stitching on your side seam. Because if you do, you're just going to cut those stitches and now your bag could come apart. You could do one of two things. You could do a bunch of top stitching in here, which... You know, that weakens your vinyl. The more you top stitch on vinyl, the more it weakens it because the more holes there are. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to put this, I'm just gonna make sure my holes are slightly either to the right or the left of this seam. And you're not even gonna be able to tell that it's off center. It's gonna look fine. So the first thing I wanna do is determine where my holes are gonna be and punch them in my connector. So I'm going to put I want to punch the holes now. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna hold the connector on the bag, just covering that inch and a half mark. And I'm just gonna use my pen here and go through and mark the holes. Now, I gotta get in the hole. <laughs> That was a little ostrich bump and I thought it was a hole. All right, let me do it this way. Okay. So I think you can see on the bag where there's marks. There's one right here, here, and then right here. And that's my inch and a half mark. So just when I punch these holes, what I want to make sure of is I'm not punching right in the seam. I'm going to punch just to the back of the seam. Before I continue too, I'm going to line up these connectors and I'm going to make marks for my other connector so that I can make sure they're the same space, the same distance. it up with this side, make my marks, and then the same thing, I'm just going to put it to the very side of the seam so that I don't cut the threads. So to punch these holes, I can't get in there with my hand punch. I actually need to um, get a board in there and use my hammer or my mallet to punch these. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that on camera. I don't need to deafen you. But I'll go ahead and punch the holes, and then we'll go ahead and put our strap connectors on. Okay, there are my holes. So, as you see, they're not on the seam. They're just to the side of it. Now, one thing I want to show you is um, to get a board in here and to lay this flat, you got to go way down because, you know, you have all this space. It's kind of hard to do. I actually have a, um, a couple of two-by-fours that I had just screwed together, and I put it inside the bag like this and then punch them. And it just helps, gives me a little extra um, support there. So, and I'm not smushing the bag so much. So, anyway, just if you have some scrap two by fours or four by four or something, that helps. It also helps if you're needing to turn your bag upside down like this to put feet in or something. You can just stick this board in, and then you can go ahead and do your holes for your feet and your. Um, you know what I mean? You're not having to, you're not having to finagle. It works out really well. I don't know if can see that. There you go. So that's a little trick if you want to um, make your life a little easier. So I just keep this under my table. Okay. So let's put these strap connectors on. Now, one other thing I do is I take a couple pieces of Decoville Heavy and I go ahead and punch holes. And I put that in the back and in, inside just to kind of give this a little extra support.
So I'm going to use a couple of um, 10 millimeter rivets, then I'm going to go down to an 8 millimeter rivet just for fun. These all kind of look cool. So stick it on the bag. And then I'm going to put my Decaville Heavy on there. So as you can see, it doesn't look off-centered. I mean, maybe just a tad, but you're not gonna be able to notice it. You'd rather have that than to have the whole side seam come out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my rivets and we'll move on to lining. Okay, starting the lining, you wanna do your zipper pocket exactly the same way we did our exterior pocket. You're gonna use the number three zipper instead of the number Five, five zipper, otherwise it's exactly the same thing. Okay. You want to take your slip pocket and you're going to fold it in half and we're going to stitch down each side. All right, go ahead and turn it. And then I'm going to go press it give it a good press then I'll be back so now that it's pressed I'm just going to stitch the top closed and I'm going to take my accent piece Okay, I went ahead and lined up the top of the pocket with a line on the um, middle of the accent piece and folded it over. And now we're going to top stitch this. Cut off these little ends. I'm cutting my threads here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take our interior lining pieces and take your zipper overlay. Let's find the center. And I'm going to find the center of my zipper overlay by just kind of putting a little crease in there, a little temporary crease. I'll take the tape off. We're going to measure an inch and a half down.
Okay, just like that. Let that side fall where it wants to. And now we're gonna top stitch around the outside of this. So let's go ahead and cut down the middle of this, cut this out here. And remember, this does not have to be pretty. Nobody will see it. Just needs to be outside the window. Take our zipper pocket. And get it aligned in here. Make sure your zipper's opening to the left, or excuse me, closing to the left. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch around the inside of this now. So make sure your pocket is open. Okay, now if you want to um, do a, and ignore what I'm doing right here. And what I mean by that is I have a lot left over and it's because I use some scraps to cut the zipper pocket. But if you cut it to the measurements that I gave you, then you'll only have about an inch to cut off. Okay. So if you want to stitch the bag and turn it, Instead of doing a drop-in lining, you want to keep the zipper pocket open. Do not stitch the bottom. Otherwise, stitch around all four edges, or all three edges. And your zipper pocket is done. So we're gonna take the other lining piece find the center and we're going to put our slip pocket on. Now these pockets in here are pretty tiny because the bag's not real big. And on this one you want to measure down two inches. Find 
the center of my pocket. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and stitch around the three sides and then I'm gonna put a rivet in each corner. All right, for the zipper placket, you wanna go ahead and measure down one inch from one side of the zipper. And this is just gonna be where we fold our zipper. We need to do that little fold and tuck deal here. Fold and tuck. We're gonna stitch this down. So you just pinch right on that line and fold it up to the zipper teeth. Okay, just like that. I'm going to stitch these down. Okay, so now our zipper has little arms. So you, you wanna take your zipper plackets and we're gonna put some double-sided tape, quarter-inch double-sided tape down each side. Go ahead and fold the edges in, the short edges. And you wanna make sure your two main pieces here are the same size. So that you're folding them the equal distance. So I'm gonna just line it up. Okay. Go ahead and fold over one side of your lining piece on each one. So now I'm gonna take my double-sided tape. This is the eighth of an inch double-sided tape. And actually, um, when I'm using this double-sided tape, Waywax sells this now, which is where I get all my other double-sided tape. I used to get the eighth of an inch, and I still do from Amazon. Um, it's not as sticky, so I use that on my domestic. And then I use the stickier Waywax tape for my industrials. I go through a lot of eighth of an inch double-sided tape.
Essentially, I use it to baste the zippers down instead of actually basting the zippers down. All right, so when we line this up, what I usually do is take this fold here and make sure that the teeth are on the other side of it. So I don't want the teeth to be right at the edge. I want the teeth to kind of be where the fold is. See that? Don't pull your zipper, just lay it down. So it's right along the edge. If you pull, you're gonna have a wonky zipper. Okay, then take a piece of your lining. I'm not putting double-sided tape all the way to the edge. I'm leaving it the edge where I haven't folded over yet. Leaving it just shy of that edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Let's see. So I'm lining up my folded edge first with the folded edge of the main fabric. Laying this all down not pulling, just letting it fall. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and fold it so my edges meet. And actually, um, I saw the Kasaya from, from Sai Swag do it this way and it really works well. This is now my favorite way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch a fourth of an inch. Okay, just like that. Just gonna put a clip here to hold this open. And then I'm going to line up my other side. Same way. And once I make sure that my edges here are the same, at the top, you can pull your zipper apart. It makes it a lot easier. And then do the same thing with the piece of lining. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off my zipper from my edge and then flip these so they are wrong sides together. This is such a small placket. You really gotta work with it to get it to do right here.
And we'll do the same thing for this one. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna top stitch and close up this other side. Okay, there's one side. While I have it in my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center. Okay, so from here, I always put the side with the zipper first because I wanna make sure my zippers close in the same direction. So I'm just going to clip this on and then we're going to baste it. Matching up the centers. Okay, now let's get your top lining pieces. And we're gonna lay these on top. And we're gonna stitch these with a quarter inch seam allowance. One fourth. I know everything else I've been saying is one half. This is one fourth, okay? fourth inch. Okay, we're going to open these up. You want your seam allowance I tell you, I've done these a couple different ways. I've done some where I flipped the whole thing up like this and then top stitch. And then I did some where I did it this way. I don't really think it matters. Um, the difference is that when you unzip your bag, do you want the zipper placket to go into the bag or do you want it to pop up out of the bag? So for instance, This one here, let 
Let's see how I did this one. So this one here, I top stitched it down, okay? So see when I open the bag, it goes inside. Oops, sorry. This one here, I did just the opposite. So this one, when I unzip it, this won't go in, it's gonna pop up. Okay, see the difference? So here you see the top stitch. You see a top stitch for the top stitching the bag together and then you see the top stitch here. On this one, you only see one top stitch where I stitched the bag together. You don't see a top stitch here. There's really no right or wrong way. It's just whatever you prefer. And sometimes what helps me decide is, is the zipper placket, when it's down, is it going to cover getting into the pockets, the interior pockets? Because if it is, then you want to top stitch it up. But if it's not, then you probably want to top stitch it down. And I think that with this one, that's the reason why I did it this way is because this side here, when you unzip this and you put this all the way down, it covers the top of that zip pocket or that slip pocket there. See? And I didn't want that because that's gonna be a pain in the butt trying to get that, get in your slip pocket every single time you unzip your bag. If this is going down, you're gonna to have to lift this out of the way and then stick your hand in. So it's just because I had placed this pocket a little bit closer to the top and then I learned, oh, I don't wanna do it that way. I wanna do it this way. So if you find that your zipper or your slip pocket is a little, or either pocket inside is a little bit closer to the top, just top stitch it so that your zipper placket's going up. Another thing too is that usually it's a little easier to get to if the zipper placket's up versus if the zipper placket's down. You know, it's just deeper in the bag. Okay? So, You choose, I've got plenty of clearance here, so I'm going to put my seam allowance towards the top, flip this over and top stitch on the actual vinyl. All right, I'm gonna put you down a little bit here. There we go. So get your key fob. I always like to put the key fob on the side of the bag that opens. So I'm gonna put it over here because when you're reaching in and you unzip, I want my keys to be right there. So I'm gonna make sure that the key fob goes on this side. And I always put it at a little bit of an angle because if you go like, if you do it like this, it's gonna be 
sticking out all the time. You usually get a bump there. It's just not very, not very good. I'm also going to be aware of where the bottom of the bag is and then make sure that the key fob just kind of skirts the bottom of the bag. Okay, so I'm just going to base that in right there. Okay, just like that. You can see it, it's going to hit right, right about where the bottom of the bag is. Okay. So let's get right sides together. Match up your lining tops here. Now, if you are going to, make sure your zippers are out of the way. If you're going to um, stitch the bag wrong sides together and then turn it, you want to keep this bottom open. Because what you'll do, you'll stitch each side, then you'll put the exterior of the bag inside here, you'll stitch around the top, then you will just pull the bag through here, of course flip it around, you will reach inside your zipper pocket to pull out the lining here. And then you'll go ahead and stitch here and stitch your edges here. Okay, it's easy to do. Um, I just, since I have my cylinder arm machine, it's just one less step. So I usually try to do drop-in linings where I can. Okay, so go ahead and stitch this. Now, I start where I want my edges to meet. So I'm gonna put my needle in right here. I'm just gonna back stitch up and then come right back down. And that way I'm ensured that that is going to match. Don't stitch your zippers. And you do want to go just a little bit wider with your seam allowance on your lining, just so your lining fits a little better. Okay, so you're gonna start at a half inch and you're just gonna go a little bit wider to maybe like five eighths down here. At this point, if you were doing the other way, you go ahead and stick your right side in here and finish up. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch my bottom. All right, box your corners. Now, go ahead and um, trim your seam allowance, but don't trim it to the top. I trim it like this. So that way, when I go to stitch this together, I have plenty of seam here to open up. If you cut it, it's hard to open that seam.
and you can even put a little bit of double-sided tape here on each of these to hold this open if you want or you can go ahead and stitch here at the top that holds it open and you can even stitch down here over your existing stitches um, where you top stitched here to hold it open there if you'd like. All right, I'm gonna box my corners, cut this one back. Match your seams, your side seam and your bottom seam. My zippers are trying to get in the way. Okay, let's stitch this up. We are almost done. Trim these down. And I'm going to mark, because I'm doing a drop in lining, I'm going to go ahead and mark one inch on the top of my bag. Draw a line. Oh, that was a half inch, hold on, one inch. Okay. Now I'm gonna put half inch double-sided tape right along the top. Make sure that's on real good. And then I'm gonna remove the backing here and I'm going to fold down to that one inch line. Now you're only going to do this if you're doing a drop-in lining.
Okay, get the front of your bag, remove your backing from your tape, and you're going to fold this right along your Decoville, using your Decoville as a guide as to where to fold it. You'll be able to feel it. It's gonna give you a nice crisp edge. So go ahead and put your lining inside your bag. I'm gonna make sure my zippers are going the right way. My zipper pocket is gonna be in the back. So we're gonna line up the sides first. And then go ahead and clip the rest of it. Okay, so I'm going to hop over to my cylinder arm and we'll go ahead and top stitch this closed. Okay, here we are at my cylinder arm and I like to have my hand in front and behind when I sew, so I wanna make sure I have you at a pretty good angle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch this. Now I'm gonna use my um, guide here to help me make sure that it, I keep a good, even straight line as I go. Now I've got a hump here from the side seam. So just to make sure I can get over it okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of vinyl back here just to kind of like make a little hump jumper. I 
just skip the stitch right there. Let's see. Yep. Here. Not sure what happened there. I'm just going to go ahead and go right back in my hole here. All right. Got a view of my sewing room there, didn't you? Okay. So the last thing is to go ahead and put on a zipper hole and then some kind of zipper end. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my Zipper on first. And I have a little um, zipper, handmade zipper jig here that I use for this. Because I really want to make sure it's even. Okay, that looks good. So I will go ahead and put my zipper end on. And of course I'll glue this on, but glue it on and then screw it on, glue and screw. Sometimes I crack myself up, glue and screw. Okay, so I will take care of that in just a minute. There's my little screw, stick this in. All right, since I am didn't have swivel clips, I'm gonna go ahead and put my handle on. So I'm just going to stick this through my ring here. Punch a hole and place a rivet right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Okay. And then I'm going to glue and screw my, <laughs> sorry, glue and screw my thing on here. And then we'll be done. Okay, here's the finished bag. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on and see if I can get you out a little bit so you can see what it looks like. Oop, let's see. Here we go. Cute, isn't it? I mean, it is just a great size. Easy to get in and out of. You can easily get to your cell phone here. I think y'all are going to enjoy this bag. So again, 
Um, you can go ahead and purchase the cutting chart from my website, simplyclassic.net. I will link it below and I will also link other things that I've mentioned in this video. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the bag and happy sewing.